Hello everyone. It seems like every year now we have a brand new group of SJWs to laugh at. In 2013 we had angry feminists like Big Red. In 2014 we had Sui Park with Cancel Colbert. And in 2015 we had the Black Lives Matter girls. We are real! We are time! So now it's about time we look back at the top 8 SJWs of 2016. Number 8, Free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi! Free Wi-Fi! This is what free Wi-Fi looks like. Earlier this month, a man named Nathan Morton was minding his own business trying to get some work done at his apartment. That didn't last long though when a few neighbors noticed he was wearing a hashtag build the wall shirt. So they approached him and tried having a reasonable discussion. You're a fucking dickhead wearing a hashtag build the wall shirt. You're so... Racist. I've never seen such a racist human being on earth. He's never been to college. You can't even fucking handle it. You know why? Because you only have a sixth grade education. Now, the lumberjack guy ends up taking off, but Sheikah here does not give up. She continues pestering him for 10 minutes straight. Good. Free Wi-Fi! <gasps> What does free Wi-Fi look like? Okay, can you can you please leave leave me alone? I don't want to talk to you. Look at look at his shirt. Can you please just leave me Build alone? Build the wall <laughs> because I'm Mexican oh, and I'm more educated than he will ever be. Okay. He's <laughs> never gone late in his oh. life. Oh. <laughs> Thankfully, the harassment finally ended when her friend comes by and pulls her away like a child. So, long story short, the wall just got ten feet higher. Number seven. Lacey Green. I'm bi. You're bi. Are we all a little bi? Ah, uh, I think the fuck not, you trick ass. Lacey Green has been garbage for some time now, but in 2016, she made a bigger fool of herself than usual. Back in August, the YouTube channel Roaming Millennial made a video titled The Myth of Cultural Appropriation. And because Lacey loves to peddle the cultural appropriation rhetoric, Roaming Millennial used her face in the video and also in her thumbnail. Apparently Lacey believes in facial appropriation too because her immediate reaction was to report the video to YouTube. This shouldn't come as a shock though since she isn't exactly known for being a fan of dissent. People began criticizing Lacey for reporting the video, so she responded by saying things like, Learn to law, and y'all aren't the sharpest lot. This whole fiasco eventually caught the attention of Philip DeFranco, who quickly called her out on her bullshit. I would ask, well, what about you? If you think that's how the law actually works, what about all of your videos? Did you get express written consent from Bieber? That's awesome, you know Bieber? But instead of admitting she was wrong, Lacey doubled down, accusing Phil of being part of the alt-right, and making a response video trying to paint herself as the victim. Which was so pitiful she turned off ratings and comments and eventually put the video on Unlisted. Her damage controlling was not enough though, because in October she lost over 13,000 subscribers. And then there was her Twitter meltdown when Trump was elected. Here's what Lacey Green tweeted before the outcome. Regardless of the outcome, we are clearly a deeply divided and broken country. So much work ahead to mend, heal, and restore the you in USA. And here's her tweet right after the outcome. We are now under total Republican rule, textbook fascism. Fuck you, white America. Fuck you, you racist, misogynist pieces of shit. Good night. Number six, Triglypuff. On April 25th, Christina Hoff Summers, Milo Yiannopoulos, and Steven Crowder held an event at UMass Amherst called The Triggering. The event was meant to be a discussion about the rise of political correctness on campus. And the students ended up reinforcing that point by protesting the event for being hate speech. Out of all the protesters though, one stood out like a sore thumb. This girl quickly became infamous online after a video of her freak out was put on YouTube. Her dramatic behavior and plus size figure earned her the name Triglypuff and soon a deluge of memes were made about her. Then people began discovering her activism on campus like promoting fat acceptance, so kinda what you expected. Ever since the incident though, Triglypuff seems to have dropped off the face of the earth. Maybe someone finally caught her. Number five, Milo Stewart. All white people are racist, all men are misogynistic, all cisgender people are transphobic, that is why I have started the hashtag 76 genders, even though there are probably more like millions of gender. Ugh. Are you uncomfortable yet? Hmm? <laughs> How about now? Okay, I think you all get the point. Let's move on.
Number four, Annalise Nielsen. Annalise Nielsen is the creator of an exclusive Facebook group called Girls Night In, which ABC felt the need to report on for some reason, and also the founder of an alt porn site called GodsGirls.com. And back in March, Nielsen tweeted that a racist Lyft driver had kicked her out of his car and left her on the freeway. However, it wouldn't be until late August that her recording of the event was leaked online, which shows her berating the driver for having a hula girl bobblehead on his dashboard. You thought that was adorable. You didn't think about like the pillaging of the like continent of Hawaii. That doll is offensive to me. But you don't want to take it down because you like found it at Goodwill and it was like a good find. You will be published on Gawker and you'll be like the next internet meme. It's going to be super funny. The recording continues with Nielsen becoming increasingly aggressive until the driver finally kicks her out. You are being rude. You have no connection to this culture. You know what that is? That's a cute little bubble item that you had in your car that you don't know anything about and you're an idiot. This is my car. Can you please get out of it? No, I won't. Call the police. Call 911. Okay. About how I won't leave your car. I wish you would. Can you please? No, I can, but you can give me your first and last name. Here, here's what I'll do instead. (laughs) Holy shit. As you might have guessed, Nielsen didn't receive very positive feedback. Pictures came out showing the mess she made in the back of the driver's car. She took down her Twitter account, which was then relaunched by a troll, and then she made a Facebook post trying to paint herself as some poor victim. Hmm, am I seeing a pattern here? Yeah, sorry Nielsen, but your legacy is ruined. Number three, the Young Turks. Yeah, I'm fucking better than you, okay? Much better than you. You are garbage. Yeah, I know I'm kind of cheating since TYT is more than one person, but these people had to be on here. Now, the Young Turks have gotten progressively worse over the years, and 2016 was no exception to that. Cenk had a hissy fit at the airport. Where's the plane? Where's the plane? Is there a plane? Where is it? Where's the plane? He mocked people who corrected him for misquoting Sarah Payne. I you got it wrong, Jake. We win, you lose. Mommy, he got it wrong, mommy, he got it wrong. <laughs> they censored a student who didn't toe the line, but their biggest blunder of the year had to have been their freakout at the RNC. When conspiracy theorist Alex Jones hijacked their show, the Young Turks handled it in the most abysmal way possible. Jank became increasingly aggressive, eventually shouting like a lunatic. We're against Saudi Arabia, you dumbass! We talk about that all the time! We talk about that all the time! Jimmy Dore spat on Alex and then scurried off. What the fuck? What a fucking cowardly little bitch! And Anna Kasparian provided some progressive commentary. It's one thing to be overweight, it's another thing to have someone fat shame you, and that's exactly what she did in this case. If someone that cares about you tells you, like, hey, let's get healthy together, it's not fat shaming. You know, fat shaming is pointing a finger at you and being like, you're fat. So overall, 2016 was not a fun year for the Young Turks. Thank goodness Dave Rubin left their horrible show. Number two. AIDS Skrillex. During a Trump rally in St. Louis, a heated argument began between this Trump supporter and a group of Trump protesters. One of the protesters being this greasy college hipster. I've done, I have done my research. I have done my research. He wants to deport- yes! He wants to deport Mexicans. That's not a fucking issue compared to the black people that are gunned down every single day by police. The argument goes back and forth for a while until our hairline receding friend says this infamous line. You're fucking a white male! You're a white man! And thus, a meme was born. Cuckstead. White male! Pieces of shit. However, some people wanted to know just exactly who Aid Skrillex was, and what they found didn't make him look much better. It turns out his real name is Ben Teeter, and he is, or was, the lead singer of a band named Strangers Now. I get to portray a message that I write about, you know, my problems and things like that, and 
I, I get to scream them at people, so it's pretty awesome. He also seems to be a bit of a mama's boy. Growing up, my mother was very strict on me. Um, we have a great relationship, but she would always yell at me. When asked how his mom feels about his music, Teeter says that his mother enjoys it very much and that it has helped the relationship grow. She loves it. She plays it in her car. She shows her coworkers. I'm sorry, I have to be honest. I can't stand it. As Strangers Now becomes more popular, Teeter will have to spend more time away from his mom. But probably the worst video to come out was of Ben letting a dog hump him. I'm not sure if that'll get me flagged though, so if you want to see that video, I'll put a link to it in the comments section. Before announcing the number one pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Oh, no. oh we should oh! Yes. <laughs> Don't live with white people. They will never, ever wash their motherfucking dishes. They won't wash their motherfucking dishes. Would you date a trans person, honestly? Think about it for a second. Okay, got your answer? Well, if you said no, I'm sorry, but that's pretty discriminatory. You are surrounded by your privilege, right? Take your privilege somewhere else, please. Number one, Zarna Joshi. Back on August 11th, Zarna Joshi went to Seattle City Hall to protest a proposed police station being called The Bunker. She began recording when she saw this pro-bunker man being interviewed by a local news station. After the interview, Zarna asked for his name, and he told her... It's humongous. Okay. And what would follow was one of the most unwarranted reactions of all time. Humongous what? Humongous what? Humongous what? Is that sexual harassment? Is that what you just did when you said that to me? What, humongous? Why would you say that to me? Yes, but my name. Why would you say that to me? This person just sexually harassed me. I said I'm humongous. Yes, yeah, that's right. Humongous what? Humongous. Oh, 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 so now you're, humongous. so now you're actually pointing to yourself. You're actually pointing to your body parts. You just abused a woman. You just abused a woman and you have the audacity, you have the audacity to say the girls matter. How dare you? Don't come Touch me! Don't touch me! Are you gonna do anything about how he sexually harassed me? Are you gonna do anything about how he sexually harassed me? The humongous video quickly spread online, and the consensus was clear. Zarna Joshi is completely out of her mind. It wouldn't be until late October that we'd hear from her again, when she uploaded a four-part series trying to, guess what, paint herself as the victim. But the fun did not end there. The last time we'd see Zarna was on Halloween at Seattle City Hall again, where she gave a speech attacking the city council. And like before, they ended up escorting her out. We noticed how in cahoots Deborah Juarez is with the cops, who's so disgusting and such a token that she won't even look at the people when they speak. We all noticed how bullies like Bruce Harrell, who speak you know, publicly find your, uh, and interrupt disruptive. women when they speak, and just I'm as you interrupt you me now, we saw how those crimes went up. Stop. We I'm saw have you how the disgust have this and contempt that you have towards the people Please have, have gone removed. up. We saw I've all of this, this, this and don't touch me. Personal attacks. Have her removed, please. Zarna's irrational and persistent behavior is a level above the rest. She seems to view herself as this great crusader who's constantly under attack, when the only thing she's a victim of is a dad joke. And for that reason, she is the number one SJW of 2016. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, giving it a thumbs up or sharing it would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more top 10 videos, click here. And thank you to SumoLounge.com for the blue beanbag chair. It is very comfy.